So here we are, three days until the end of the transfer window, and Manchester United are sitting pretty with Donny van der Beek as the only signing that the club has made this summer. It's a situation that a lot of us expected, a situation that a lot of us are not surprised about, but a situation where we're all pissed off about, because this summer was the opportunity for Manchester United, for not, actually not Manchester United, it was the opportunity for Ed Woodward, Matt Judge and the Glazers to change the pattern that we have seen since Sir Alex Ferguson retired, to fully back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with the signings that he needs to elevate Manchester United from that third place finish last year to pushing towards that top two. But instead, this summer has only reinforced the fact that Manchester United now is not a football club anymore. It, it's, a, it's a business venture. And that won't ever change whilst the Glazers are United's owners. It, it is as simple as that. And I don't give a fuck what happens in the next 72 hours. If United go mad and somehow sign Jadon Sancho, even though all the words from Dortmund are that they would even reject 120 million at this stage, and I wouldn't blame them. Even if we somehow cough up the money for Alex Tellez, even if we go and sign, I don't know who else, this summer would still be a failure because it was an opportunity for you. Know, look, the transfer window started early. There was no problem this summer with time. The only problem we've had this summer has been money. And the money is there. Even if it's not there in pure cash, United have a credit facility that we can take money out of because the Glazers have turned us into a debt-ridden horse. Just United... <coughs> I don't really know how to explain it. It, how frustrating it is as a United fan. And for so many fans looking in, they just think that we're spoilt brats because we've spent nearly a billion on signing since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. But it doesn't matter how much we spend. It's who's spending it. And now we're not spending anything. And it's not as if we haven't got players off the wage bill this summer. Alexis Sanchez, Andreas Pereira, Chris Smalling is going to be joining Roma. Diogo Dalot is going to be going to AC Milan. And maybe we'll see Sergio Romero leave as well. That in itself would pay for two players, two decent players' wages. But instead, we're not willing to pay Porto 20 million euros for a 27-year-old left-back with Champions League top-level experience. We're haggling over four or five million there. We're not willing to pay the money to Borussia Dortmund for Jadon Sancho. Now, given that is a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things and comparison for relativity, if we're willing to pay 80 million to Leicester for Harry Maguire, then we should be 100% willing to pay 108 million to Dortmund for Sancho, who is a 20-year-old superstar already that has 10 years of his career ahead of him. He will be one of the world's best players for years and years and years. And in comparison to how much we pay for Harry Maguire, we should be willing to spend all that money on Jadon Sancho. But I've done so many videos this summer on the patterns that we have seen since Sir Alex Ferguson retired and the fact that when we finish outside the top four, the Glazers spend big. But when we finish inside the top four, the Glazers decide to crank back the spending because it doesn't match their business model, which is based around finishing inside the top four. We are now a top four club. We are not a club with the ambitions of winning the Premier League and the Champions League titles. It is as simple as that. And nobody can tell me otherwise. And as I said, no amount of mad panic signings at the end of this window. Dembele, Cavani, Jovic, whoever else we've been linked to. It's just the signs of a club that really, at the heart of it, is not moving forward. And cannot move forward with the power structures that we have in control and the owners that own the club. It is as simple as that. This really was the summer where Woodward and Judge could have proven themselves. Because I think since uh, Solskjaer came in, the actual signings we've been making, I've agreed with a lot more. But this summer, it, all that good work's been unravelled. It's all gone in the bin because we're now sat three days before the start of the new season. And let's look at the clubs around us. Liverpool, they signed Thiago. They signed Jota. And they didn't even need to make a fucking signing. City, they got Ruben Diaz, they got Torres, they got someone else as well. They've strengthened their weaknesses. Chelsea have signed the world. Hell, even Spurs have got Vinicius and they've got Mourinho, a good amount of players, and maybe they're going to sign Skriniar as well. 
Ah, well, Arsenal haven't done too much, but I suppose it's not really what you expect anything else apart from Arsenal. But all of our rivals around us have strengthened in a summer where it, clearly it's not that difficult to strengthen in this coronavirus market. doesn't mean it's impossible because other clubs have proven that. Yet United have sat there and not spent where spending could have changed our fortunes this season. And the reason I say that nothing matters if nothing matters really in the next 72 hours if you go out and sign those players because we've already played a, a few games this season and now when they come in it's going to take them a few weeks, a month, maybe even two months to settle into the club, into a new surroundings and for Jadon Sancho if it happens, into a new country. Obviously coming back to Manchester so he's a little bit more acclimatised but... There was an opportunity to get the signings done early for Solskjaer to have his squad in front of him and for him to really plan this season out. Instead, with three days to go, Solskjaer doesn't know who he's going to be starting against PSG in the Champions League opener because he doesn't know who his squad is. He doesn't know who, what players he has. He doesn't know what players he doesn't have because we could still see two, three, four players leave. And if the rumours are correct, we could see two or three players come in. But United haggling over five million over Tellez, are you going to get a clearer sign of what the priorities are at this club? The only victories that happen every summer for Woodward and Judge and the Glazers are if they get a player for less than what that player, the club wants that player to be sold for. That is a victory for them. They'll go in there and they'll clink their glasses of cognac and they'll say, well done, lads, that was a good summer. Whereas in reality, the context tells us completely differently. The Manchester United are just not a football club anymore. Us fans are sitting here and we've got the ambitions to go out there and try and fucking catch City, try and catch Liverpool. Hell, they're the years ahead of us, but let's try and close that gap. They closed that gap on us. Remember, we dominated the Premier League for years and other clubs were in our position looking at us going, I want to close that damn gap. And eventually they did. And they pushed us right down to where we are now. And now we need to show that fight as a football club to do the same thing back to them. But the reality is, is that while we've got the Glazers as our owners, I don't think that is a possibility because their ambitions and their goals and targets are completely in contrast to what a football club's targets and what us fans' targets are to watch this club get back to those titles and trophies. But all the Glazers care about is that bottom line, is how much money they can make, is how much they can take out in dividends, how much debt they can put on the club until they sell the club for a substantial profit. That's all they care about. And the debt has been just such a burden for United for so long. And Fergie was such a genius that he not only coped with it, but he rebuilt that club in that 2006-2009 period. Arguably the best we've ever been in the Premier League. And arguably better than that treble team. That team we have Ronaldo, Tevez and Rooney and Hargreaves and Carrick and Scholes and Giggs. Oh my, 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 my. Ferdinand and Vidic and van der Sar and Evra. Christ. That team was incredible. And Fergie rebuilt that. But he is a genius. A once in a lifetime genius that <sighs> glossed over the problems that the Glazers brought on the club. But now that he's gone, they've all come to the surface. And they won't go away. And as I said, this summer was the opportunity for Manchester United to correct the problems, to back a manager after he's finished in the top four, a season where Solskjaer maybe even exceeded expectations, certainly did by finishing third, no one expected that. And it could have been the chance to build on that by signing Sancho, by signing a centre-back, by signing a left-back and signing a central midfielder. And don't tell me it's impossible because Chelsea have done it. Liverpool have strengthened more than we have and they didn't need to and so have City, so have Spurs. So the context, context sorry, tells me it can be done. But United are choosing not to do it because they don't want to spend that money. And once upon a time, we were the greatest football club in the Premier League, the greatest football club in England, one of the greatest football clubs in the world. But right now, we're nothing more than a business venture, than a cash cow for the Glazers to get as much money as they can out as quickly, actually for as long as possible. And it's a sad reality, but that's, how, that's what I feel. I wanted to say that, and I don't think any... Panic buyers or panic movement in the last three days changes any of that damage that has been done this summer. That's my opinion. You may disagree with that, but I just wanted to do this video because it's really how I feel. So I suppose let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But this summer, man, was a real opportunity. But the same problems are still there.
And that is down to Woodward, to Judge, and to the Glazers.